There's a lot that we're going to go through in the demo. So I want to take you through a couple of different scenarios first around what Steve talked about is reimagining the experience on Windows 8 devices for things like touch, using, uh, using ink and stylus, and some of the new experiences that you'll see. Um, I'm going to start in Microsoft PowerPoint. This is a great uh, example of an application that we can use to show some of the experience that we've got on this device. Now, first, I'm running this demo on a Samsung tablet. Uh, you can see it here. I'll hold it up briefly. It's connected to a couple of cords for this demonstration. All of you here in the room will get one of these devices at the end of the, of the session here, so you can play around and do exactly the kinds of things that I'm doing. Uh, and so hopefully that we'll use the same device here. Now, when I've got PowerPoint up and running here, the first thing you'll notice, it's a very sleek, a very clean, beautiful user experience. I can use my fingers to navigate as I'm on this touch-based device. So I can just go ahead and tap and go through my different slides that are here. Maybe I'll drop into the slide sorter mode. Uh, I can do things as you would expect, like pinch and zoom. So I can zoom out, or I can zoom into my presentations. I'll go back to that first one that's there. Now, you see at the very top, the ribbon is there, but it's hidden. So when I want to interact with the ribbon, when I want to use commands, I can do that. I just simply tap on it, and that'll bring up the ribbon. Now, if I want to do a lot of editing and so forth, maybe I'll actually pin it, like I'll do right here. And so I can have all my commands uh, at my fingertips. Now, using the ribbon is as simple as it's ever been on a tablet device. I can go ahead and let's, go, let's say I want to add some animations or transition effects. I'll start here. We'll use the cut animation effect. I'll go to this next one, maybe switch. I'll go to this third one here. I'll show you a new one. This is called drape. It's a, a new one that'll come in the new office. Now, once I've got my presentation ready to go, I'll go ahead and I'll present the presentation for everybody to see here. Now, PowerPoint's always been a great application for helping you create your ideas and then going presenting them. One of the scenarios that Steve talked about that we want to focus on in this release is how presenters can be more confident while they're delivering the presentation itself. So here, I'll go through and I'll just use my finger to navigate through my slides. I've got my, my tablet here, and I can just swipe if I want, or I can tap if I'd like to go from slide to slide to slide. I can double tap if I want to zoom in as the presenter. So let's say I want to zoom in here to North America. I can do that just by, by tapping. And of course, as Steve mentioned, I can annotate. I can mark up uh, using a digital pen or a stylus. And so here, I'll show you how that can work. I'll go ahead and turn on a pen here. And let's say instead of 25% profits going to charity, I want to cross that out. I want 30% going to charity. I can underline, of course. I can highlight. Uh, some people like to use a pen as a laser pointer when they're giving presentations. So we have a laser pointer option as well. I'll change that there. You can see as I hover over, you can see the laser pointer appear on the slide if I want to you know, highlight things during my presentation. So I'll drop out of that for a quick second. What you're looking at is the final presentation, of course. What I'm looking at as the presenter is something that's different. And it's a new experience that we've created called presentation mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch the display here for a moment so you see what I've been working on. It's very easy in Windows 8. I can go ahead and just switch those monitors. And take a look at this screen. This is effectively a cockpit for me as the presenter to help me be more confident when I deliver the presentation. You can see here, this is the slide that everybody's been looking at. If you go over on the far right here, you can see the next slide in the presentation so I know what's coming. I've got all my notes, my cheat sheets, right here for me. So as I'm looking, holding up that tablet device, you know, I can have the confidence of, of what points I want to make next. Uh, here's the drawing pen that I was using. I tapped on this. You guys couldn't see that, but that use is what I use for the stylus, zooming in, zooming out. There's even a clock and a timer so I can make sure that I, I stay on time during my presentation. So a number of different capabilities here. I'm going to tap and get out of this for a quick sec. But a number of different capabilities here that show you what we can do with Windows 8, with touch, with our fingers, with a stylus uh, on these beautiful new devices. Now, it's not just Outlook that's gotten a makeover here in the new office. Uh, we've extended this user experience across all the office applications. And so, for example, I'm going to drop in to Outlook and give you a quick look at what we've done in Outlook. Now, again, just like in PowerPoint, the first thing that you'll notice is a very, very clean, fluid user experience. Uh, like in PowerPoint, the ribbon is there, but it's hidden. So if I need it, I just tap on it, bring it up, I can get rid of it when I'm done. I can do the same thing with folders. So if I want to pull up my folders and maybe drag and drop items into my folders, I can go ahead and do that. I can navigate through my mail messages just easily with my finger. 
You can see I can just tap through them here. And in fact, we've added a new tool. It's called the Quick Actions tab on the far right of the screen. And what I can do with that is as I'm going through my mail and say triaging it, if I want to flag a mail message, I can do that, just touch. If I want to move an item, I can go ahead and do that. If I want to delete, a very, very quick delete key there. Again, all using my finger. Uh, now, for that matter, one of my favorite new capabilities that's here is inline reply. So in the past, when you would reply to messages, and maybe you got lots of mail, you'd have all kinds of windows open on the screen, and that can be hard to manage through. Here, I can just respond to this message in line, and it's a much, much cleaner experience. And you notice I did that. I didn't even have to use the keyboard. I used the Windows 8 keyboard here in the, on the machine itself. Now, there's another new user interface element that I want to mention to you. I showed you that we had the Quick Actions tab on the far right. We've cleaned up the space there, and we've removed the calendar and the task view that was there before, so you could really have the full experience of reading your mail. We've created a new capability uh, called Peaks. So if I hover over Calendar at the bottom, People at the bottom, you can see that I get a quick peek of all my people, my calendar, my tasks, and so forth. And these are fully interactive. So as I can go through here, say on the calendar, I can tap to different days, click through here, double click if I want to, to go right into uh, the calendar itself. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'll just drop in. Now, as you'd expect, here's the calendar. And again, it's fully enabled for touch. I can just go ahead and swipe from week to week. I can zoom in and zoom out as you would expect. Go to this particular day and get the idea here. Now, as Steve talked about, there's a lot more to come over the coming months as we talk more about Office. I wanted to introduce you to the new Office developer model uh, that, we've, that we have in, in the new Office itself here. This is a model where developers will be able to build web-based applications in the cloud that can be then consumed in the Office experience itself, say right here uh, in Outlook. Now these applications can be built on Azure, on AWS, on GoDaddy, on a partner-hosted or private cloud infrastructure, but the user experience of those applications get consumed right here inside of Office. Let me give you a, a quick example of what, what that, that might look like. There's two uh, apps for Office that are installed here. here. One uh, is called Bing Maps, and another is called Suggested Appointments. So if you look at this mail message, you'll see part of the sentence says, the address is 2230 1st Avenue, Seattle. I'll go ahead and just click on Bing or tap on Bing Maps. And what that does is it scans the email, it identifies that there's a dir an address there, and it puts this map in place. Pretty cool. It's also interactive, though. So I can go and navigate through it. I can tap if I want to go deeper. You get the idea here. I can zoom right in if I'd like. Just a simple example, but a great one of how we can harness the power of the cloud here inside the Office applications. There's another one I'll show you just real quickly, suggested appointments. Similar concept, looks at the email message. There's, you see someone suggesting maybe we should get together at a particular time. I can just go ahead and click Save to Calendar here and jump to the calendar itself. So a whole new Office experience really taking advantage of the power of Windows 8. Now, when we talk about Windows 8, Steve mentioned that there's a whole new design style for applications. Formerly known as Metro Applications, we're talking about Windows 8 style applications here. And we've got two that we're starting with for Office in this release. We've picked Link and OneNote for communication scenarios and note-taking experiences because they're perfect for these tablet types of devices where you want an immersive experience for people that are on the go. So let me give you a look at what the OneNote application will look like. Now, for folks that aren't familiar with OneNote, let me first just talk a little bit about what it is. It's our digital note-taking application. As you can see here, you can keep all kinds of different content in OneNote. I've got things like text, of course, pictures. Steve referenced inking is available here. There's content from the web. You can see you have things like task lists. Students love OneNote because I'll go to a student page as an example. You can see that you can keep all kinds of lecture information or your classroom notes. You can do inking and so forth. Businesses love it. Lots of scenarios in business environments where people want to be able to take notes. Maybe insert PowerPoint presentations into OneNote. You can easily mark them up that way. People can have collaborative authoring sessions on this page itself. And then consumers use it for all sorts of different things, for grocery lists, for task lists, uh, for vacation planning. In this case, even things for recipes. Now, with OneNote, 
we tried to make it easy to consume content in this new Windows 8 style of applications. If I want to go ahead and use my finger to navigate through all my notebooks, it's just really easy. As you saw, I was able to go up and down with my notebook. If I want to enter content, there's a bunch of different ways to do that. Of course, I can use mouse and keyboard. Uh, but we also, of course, enable the pen and stylus. So I can go ahead and write anywhere I want to over my notes. If I say, hey, you know, this 930 is wrong, I'll just cross that out. Say, so let's get together at 10 o'clock. My handwriting is terrible here. A little nervous. <laughs> I can circle things that I think are important. I can annotate on the map itself if we want to meet down here at those particular points. I can do those sorts of things. You get the idea. Now, of course, if I need to be able to uh, format or edit my notes, we've made that simple too. And there's a great new capability that we have here called the radial menu. And with the radial menu, which I'll pop up right here, I have all the commands that I need at my fingertips. So if I want to go ahead and say bold, Saturday's walking tour, I just tap bold. If I want to change the color, I'll tap on the color wheel and I can pick a color. Who knew there were so many shades of blue or purple? My favorite control here is the font size one. It looks like a speedometer. If I want to increase the font size, let's make it big, 36 point. Real simple to do using the new radial menu. Now, talked a little bit about touch, talked a little bit about using my fingers. What's also great about these devices, these modern devices, is that oftentimes they'll have integrated cameras with them. And so people will typically use OneNote and often will uh, capture an image, maybe on a whiteboard, uh, maybe something that they've seen as they're walking down the, w walking down the street as they're vacation planning, lots of different types of scenarios. One I want to show you is, uh, let's say I wanted to go grab uh, some content. I've got a, a quick, a quick uh, helicopter tour here for San Francisco. I'll show you how easy this will be and how we've integrated One, OneNote with the Windows 8 experience and the camera in this device. I'll bring up that radial menu again. And I'll tap camera. And let's go ahead and just minimize this. And you can see I've got this on my desk here. I'll go ahead and just tap it. That'll take a quick picture of it. I can go ahead and crop it. Let's say I just want to capture this part here. I want to remember the San Francisco helicopter piece. Tap OK. And I can just drop that right into my notebook. Real simple. And then if I want to move it around or resize it, I can just go pick it up with my finger, drag and drop, put it where I want it to be. So a great example here of the immersive style of applications that we can deliver with Office, taking advantage of what Windows 8 uh, can provide for us. Now, for the next part of this demonstration, I want to show you a couple of things about how we talk about Office being in the cloud. This is a hugely important part of the release, as Steve talked about. We're transitioning the Office business as a cloud service. And to highlight this, I want to show you a couple of examples using uh, the new Microsoft Word. The scenario here is that I want to show you uh, how we can do some sharing scenarios from device to device. Now, I've just opened up Word for the, first, uh, for the first time here, and you'll see the user experience very similar to PowerPoint in the sense that it's clean and it's fluid. When you first open up the Office applications, you'll notice that you will sign into them. If you look in the upper right corner of the screen, I'm signed in as Kirk. It's got my picture here. And when I'm signed in, you get access to things like your settings. You get access to things like your most recently used documents. You can see them on the far left that's there. You get access to things like all of your templates. Your templates will roam with you from device to device to device. Even things like custom dictionaries. You have a name like Kernigsbauer. That's a custom dictionary entry you want to have with you no matter what machine you're on. And that will roam with me as I move from device to device. Now, by default, the Office applications will store content in the cloud. Of course, you can store them locally as well. But by default, we're storing content in the cloud using our SkyDrive service. So I'll open up a document that I've got here. Let's store it up in SkyDrive. We'll talk a bunch about SkyDrive in the next couple of minutes. But first, let me point out this new view that you're seeing in Word. This is the Word reading mode. And this is a new experience that we've created that takes advantage, again, of what these Windows 8 devices can deliver for us uh, running Office. The idea with reading mode is Word's always been a fantastic tool for authoring. We want to make it a first-class tool for reading. So because it's, of course, a tablet and touch-enabled, I can just go ahead and tap from page to page. What's great about reading mode is, independent of what device you have, Word will resize for the size of that device. So if I'm on a phone, it'll render in a different way. If I'm on a tablet that's landscape mode, that's a different view. It'll give me the view that's best for that particular experience. There's also some great capabilities here, too, where let's say you're uh, in an environment where you want to change the lighting. Let's say I'm on an airplane, and it's dark, and it's the, the white contrast is a little bit too rough for my eyes. I can go to page color, 
go to inverse for a moment and have a black background with white text if I want or sepia, you get the idea.